Depending on the size of your telescope, some deep sky objects won't fit in your field of view, and they'll be cut off on the edges. Some examples of very large nebulae that might not fit in your field of view are the Cygnus Loop, the North America and Pelican Nebulae, or the Stellar region, for example. So, what's a good alternative if the telescope you own is too big for what you want to capture? It's simple, a camera lens. In this video, we're going to image a section of Monoceros that includes several nebulae using a Rokinon 135mm lens. So we're going to keep this camera here for filming and instead attach the lens to an astro camera, so the ASI 2600. And we're going to use the Astronetics mount to kind of act as a telescope. So we can just add, for example, the ASI Air to it as well as a guide scope and capture the object just like using a telescope. Let's do it! This video was supposed to be released a year ago, but you might remember that something unexpected happened right after we started filming. Here. Here. <laughs> and we just happened, happened to come across this beautiful puppy. Oh, so, <laughs> we found our dog, Stella, in the desert, in the middle of nowhere, and because of all of her cries, we just couldn't keep filming, so we had no choice but to abort our mission and take her home. You're coming home with me. <laughs> By the way, if you want a quick update on Stella, she's doing awesome. She's living her princess life. She smells so good. She loves playing with other dogs and she's just having a better life overall. She got so lucky and so did we. Today we're going to start that video again, shooting the same target that we planned originally, but from home instead of the desert for an added challenge against the light pollution. Recently, we also used this same lens and setup, but with the Canon RA from a dark site to capture a constellation, Cassiopeia. It turned out nice, and you can see it outlined here. Okay, so here is the actual setup pretty quick. It's dark outside, so it'll be very fast. Uh, here is a mount, the M5, which we love. We have the telescope here, well, the rocking on lens instead which is attached to this Astronetics uh, 3D printed mount, which is specifically designed for the Rokinon 135 uh, lens. It is just perfect, because as you can see here, because of this mount, we're able to use this lens just like a telescope and attach any accessory to it. So for example, the lens here is attached on the mount, and the ZW focuser is just attached right underneath here. Then we have the camera mounted over here, on top, we have two spots, one for, for example, the guide camera, guide scope. So we have it over here as well. And here is if you want to attach something like an ASI Air. Uh, right now, our ASI Air is attached on the side of the mount, which is not a good thing because the cables can get pushed against the mount when it's rotating and stuff. So don't do that. Uh, but for tonight, we're going to do this because the <laughs> we attached some, uh, some straps here and they're way too strong. So we can't actually use those straps. It's just like super, super hardcore. And it's almost impossible to remove. So I don't want to break the ASI Air. But if you use the correct ones, you should put the ASI Air over here. And once uh, everything is attached, it's just perfect. You can rotate the camera slash lens using uh, these two knobs over here. Be careful because they're 3D printed, so it can be a bit uh, fragile. But if you loosen this, then you can just rotate the whole thing. But yeah, let's just go outside and um, start imaging using all of this. All right, come with me. It's so light, I love it. The Rosette Nebula and the Christmas Tree Cluster are in the constellation Monoceros. This is one of the last nebula sections of the sky to set behind the trees, making the Rosette and Christmas Tree the last good targets of winter. From our backyard, they disappear behind some trees around 11pm, so we'll shoot them from 8 to 11 for several nights in a row until we feel we've gathered enough data. Okay, so I did my best to aim the telescope at you know, the area in between the Rosette Nebula and the Christmas tree. And I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, it took a while because the rotation was kind of uh, difficult to, to get right. But here, as you can see, we have the Rosette on the bottom left here. 
and the obvious Christmas tree cluster uh, visible here on the right. I made sure that the, the cluster wasn't too much on the edge because I know there is so much cast all around. So I'm guessing like this, it will be perfect. Uh, we'll have a beautiful rosette nebula as well as a Christmas tree slash cone nebula with a bunch of gas everywhere. And once we stack all this, uh, hopefully it's going to look nice. And in there I'm using um, the L Ultimate filter from Optolong, which is a dual band filter. And I'm doing 600 second exposures, so 10 minutes, because with Nebulae I always do that, always 10 minutes. So um, just keep it simple, always 10 minutes. And uh, in the morning tomorrow I'll take some flats and probably do the same for three or four nights to achieve around maybe 30 hours. Cool. Looks like it's going to be a great image. We spent as many clear nights as possible on this area of the sky, even when the moon was up, so we feel that that's fine thanks to the dual band filter. In total, we gathered 30 hours of exposure and made sure to check our focus throughout each night, although we didn't really need to tweak it. And this is what the result looks like once stacked. As you can see, there is so much gas visible here. I'm sure we can bring this out so much during processing and if we zoom in on the Christmas tree it looks very nice, the stars look fine, the cone nebula looks very bright here and if we zoom in on the rosette here uh, it seems like the stars are not pretty, uh, it seems like the Rockinon lens did not do an awesome job on this side for some reason, maybe it is the adapter, maybe it's something else but um, it's not too bad so we'll probably be able to fix that in post and uh, and try our best to process it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work on this in the next couple hours and we'll reveal the result in just a bit. So as you can see, it turned out very, very well. You can make out the rosette, you can make out the Christmas tree nebula. There's so much nebulous gas everywhere and it's super duper red. It's really nice to see. And the lens did a good job. I barely cropped this image at all, so uh, the stars look nice. So if you want to get the astronautics mount, as you can see here, still attached to everything, um, you can. I will have a link below. The, if you want a coupon, you can use Galactic Hunter as a coupon, and I think the first 10 people will get a, a discount for this, so it's great. So yeah, if you own a 135mm lens, like the Rockinon slash Samyang, it is perfect for Astro. And we love this lens, and we just use it for Astro only, so we'll just keep it like this, mounted the whole time. So we'll see you guys next time, and clear skies. Yes. Thank you.